Ciao gentle viewers. I'm so excited to film another uh, segment today, another uh, vlog post, and uh, I'm so happy to um, have you back in the studio with me today and get to hang out with you. And if you're brand new and you're a new subby, I want to thank you for your subscription, for your likes, for your comments, for your shares, and your thumbs up. We so appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. And uh, my name is Katharina Giglio, and most people call me Kat. I know Katharina Giglio is a lot to say. Um, believe me, I went through my whole life with it, so <laughs> I know it's difficult to pronounce. Um, today we're going to be doing a, uh, a little um, project. Um, this, it was in uh, So Somerset um, a little while back, and it's my bird quilts, and I know some of you absolutely love to do projects, so that's what we're going to do today. So this is the article that I wrote for so Somerset, and um, most of these have already sold, all the, all the large pieces sold, and I kept two for myself. Um, this one is in the article, you can see, and I thought it would be fun to uh, recreate these today. Um, we're not, not going to do it exactly the way they are because, well, that would be boring, but not only that, um, we don't have all the same materials, so we're going to recreate and uh, play with it, and um, we've got quite a bit of stitching to do today, and we're going to get started right now. Okay, so let's go over all the supplies you're going to need for this project. Uh, the very first thing you're going to need is cotty paper, and I'm going to have Don put that on the screen so that you can see what it is. And if you're interested in any of these supplies, um, just go to my comment section. Um, I've got cotty paper that you can get at Amazon, and uh, you're going to need gel medium, and we're going to use um, some kind of an upholstery thread or a button thread, something that's a little more heavy duty to show up. You're going to need sari silk, and this is from an old sari. I just ripped it up, and then you're going to manipulate the sari silk, and I'll show you how to do that later. And you're going to need lots of scraps. So now basically, these were considered to be black and white. Oh, and you're going to also need to have a piece of cotton material. You could use an old sheet. Um, I used a uh, oh, an old tea towel uh, and just uh, put fabric sizing on it. And so you're going to need a piece of that. And as you can see, so they're supposed to be um, black and white, but I never do anything solid black and white. There's always color involved, which holds your interest. It's not quite as smack in your face black and white, um, and of course a little bit of red to really to really offset it. In fact, red, white, and black is one of the most arresting of um, of color choices. Um, it really stops you in your tracks. Okay, so. Sari silk. If you're not familiar with it, this is an old sari that I bought many years ago, and um, I loved the basic gray color of it and the um, the bright uh, trim on it. Um, <clears throat> I manipulated the sari silk, and the way I did it was to just cut a piece out. Actually, I just ripped it, and then uh, I got it wet, and then I scrunched it and then twisted it into place. And so that's what you see here. So that's how I manipulated it. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but it's gonna look absolutely great on our project. All right, so now the size, you can make these any size you want to. The size I used is basically about four and a half by four and a half to make the backing square. And the fabric is going to be the backing. We're going to actually work on the cotty. And I used a three by three template to just create the space for my collage. So I'm going to be collaging and then stitching into the cotty paper and then we're going to mount it onto the fabric. The first thing that you want to do is to decide on an image and you can see these are really tiny little images um, even though that it's my focal image and everything else supports it but they're really small. So for this one I decided I would use a, a bird image that's a little bit bigger and I'm just trying to decide which one I want to use. I really like the tree sparrow. Whichever one I use, the goldfinch or the tree sparrow, I'm going to have to say goodbye to the other one, which is fine. 
I don't mind that. Um, but I think I'm going to um, go with the goldfinch. I don't know why. I just think it's really cool. Um, anyway, so we're going to pick that and I'm just going to rip it out. So I'm just going to rip around the image. And I've got my gloves on because we're going to start collaging. But I just want to get an idea of what kind of space I need for this image. And these are from a really old book that, as you see, not only was falling apart, but um, completely crumbled. And I just pulled the rest of the, the pages out of there. Okay, so I'm just going to play with this just a tiny bit. I don't want to rip his head off. I want to keep his head. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of the size, the area that I'm going to need to use. And I have to decide if I want to cut him out or if I want to just keep him ripped, which is the way I did it here. I just ripped around the, uh, the piece. And this is how you can use a larger piece, a, a larger print or etching. You know, cut it up into smaller pieces to use in your work. It just doesn't serve you any purpose not to use all of the pieces. Um, so I think we're going to use that and then we're going to get started. And I used my 3x3 three three template to to delineate the lines on here so that I would know where my edges are to come up to. You could do it that way or you could just collage a piece and then whatever you like just, just simply cut it out and then put it on here. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. All right, I'm just going to get started. I'm just going to start um, cutting things up and, and seeing where I want everything to fit. So I've just cut some pieces up and I'm just playing with them. I'm just trying to see what I like, what kind of composition I like. Um, I'm thinking I want, since my bird is just going to be just sitting here, I might want to give him a ground so the red line would work really well. And I had two different kinds of papers. This one was just highly saturated with red paint. And then this one is a, an old paste paper just painted over and over again. Um, and I decided that I didn't like the texture of this one. I, I like a flatter look. And I actually think it's the same one that I used with these guys. So I think I'm going to go with that as my ground. So I'm going to start getting ready to glue these into place. I also like having a stamp here and maybe this piece here somehow. So we'll see because I want to tie more red in. So this is an old, these are old German stamps. They're kind of cool. I think I like the 10 better. Um, so I'm thinking about that. And then we're going to put the sari silk down here as well. And I think it's going to go something like that. So we're going to have two grounds. Okay, we're going to get busy gluing this down. Okay, so I just measured it to fit into the space that I want. And I think I'm going to put this one here. Yeah, I think that one's going to go there. And yes, I'm going over the top. <laughs> and then I think this piece is going to go up here. So we've got three sections. Now, in the really smaller ones, as you can see, I used a lot of different pieces that came together. But because our image is so much larger than these, I've decided to use smaller, uh, or I mean uh, larger pieces rather than those small, small pieces. Okay, and now we're going to poke this in here like this. 
you don't have to have everything perfectly straight. The ground isn't straight. Trees aren't straight. You don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to cut this off right about there. Okay, so we've got our ground all set, our background. All right, so I've got them tacked down with the glue that I had already spread on top. That's a little tip that I want to give you is that when you have to glue things down, you want to glue the bottom, but you always want to glue over the top. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't lift up. And so now I've got my bird on here placed where I want my little goldfinch to go. And I'm going to put the stamp on here too. I think I'm going to put him right here. And I just love the way this worked out. Um, I had used stamps in the other ones, so I thought it would be fun, but the paper actually um, was an old postcard from, from uh, France, and it had the uh, cancellation on there, so that works out really just perfectly. I love how that works out. And then I just took my sari silk and I just laid it across. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Manipulation is one of those things in, um, and I'm just following this curve with the bird here that you can see where I ripped it out. I'm just, I'm just pushing the sari silk so that it will mimic that and uh, just looks like it, it wants to live there, right? Okay, now our next step is going to be stitching. Okay, so I'm stitching. Um, I'm using the upholstery thread and uh, I've doubled it. And I'm not going to put a knot because I don't want there to be a bump back there. I'm just gonna hold it and then stitch. And I'm just going to stitch the sari silk into place all along here so that it's not going to move anywhere. You're not going to see it on the back at all. So this is going to hold it down, but stitches also create uh, a mark, an intentional mark in your work. And uh, it, it just adds the, another element of texture and you want work to be visually appealing, to be interesting, to hold your attention. So I'm just going to stitch through this and then we'll come back. I am almost done stitching and uh, decided to go back over it one more time because I just didn't I didn't like it, it, it. There weren't enough stitches. I wanted it to be really highly stitched and to really hold it down. And um, I wanted to create that sense of the sense of marks. So I just went back over it again. And I'm going to do it one more time here too. In the end, sometimes it helps to stitch from the front and then go back and see where you poked through. Sometimes it helps. There we go. Okay, we've got this stitching done and then we're gonna stitch the edges too. So we're gonna stitch around the edge here. And we're gonna get started on that right away. Well, before I stitch it, I'm just gonna tack my threads down with the gel medium. Stay. Be good and stay. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to just slightly tack it down to the cloth. So you can see I've got just a little bit of gel medium on there. I just want it to hold into place. And I don't want the threads to move around. I want them to stay. They're 
knotty sometimes. It's upholstery thread, so it's supposed to have a mind of its own and be really tough. Okay, so I'm just going to position my cloth, which I don't remember if I told you that I magic sized it, so it's a little bit stiff. Um, and but that's okay. I want it to be a little bit stiff. I'm just going to set it down here. Okay, and now we're going to stitch around the edge. But this way, all the fabric, all the stitches are going to stay nice and flat, and the cloth won't be moving back and forth. Now, it's easier if you pre punch your holes. So you can either use your needle or you can use an awl to do it. It doesn't really matter, but it makes it a lot easier for stitching. Your stitches will be a little bit more uniform. And instead of coming through the back of the fabric, come through on the side. So I'm going to come through in here. And I'm going to hold my thread. like that and we're going to be able to tuck that back in. That way it won't show in the back. You'll just just your stitches will show. Alrighty then, I've got all the stitches all the way around it. Um, you can vary your stitches, uh, kind of speed up your, your collage or, or slow it down or create more interest. You can do whatever you want to. And now I'm going to add the little stitches on the corner and I just did those separately and just came through here. Sometimes I have to stop and remember, now how did I do that again? <laughs> So I'm just going to poke it down because we're going to glue those. Okay. And then we're just going to stitch. Yeah, right there. So that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to finish the rest of them and then show you how to glue it down. So I'm just finishing this off by coming back through the front and then just stitching it through just to get a little knot there like that. And then I'm just going to cut that one off. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my threads off. Get rid of them. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and use a little bit of gel medium, not a lot. Make sure your brush, your brush is pretty dry. And they're going to stay put. One side down. Come to this side. And cut these guys off. Yep. Purses. There we go. My scissors aren't as sharp as they used to be. Okay, a little bit of glue. Hold those down. Okay. There we go. Now you can glue it completely down to the cloth if you like. I left mine out just a little bit, but whatever you want. You know, it's going to go in a frame, so you probably aren't going to see, you won't be seeing the back of it anyway, which the stitches are hidden back there, but still. And if you want a cloth that has no threads, you know, then stitch it or fold it, iron it, do whatever you want to, or don't do anything. Just use the cotty and just frame the cotty up. 
Well, I hate to say it, but we are at Chow for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed making little bird quilts in the studio with me today. And uh, I can't wait to see you next time. And until then, Chow for now.